So, um, our last speaker is Dr. Maurice Redondo, head of the core lab and head of the production West Violier e Basel. So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you, Bühlmann, for the invitation, giving me some good tapas yesterday, enough sangria and red wine, so you know I'm really prepared for this talk. So, we talk now about full automation in a, in, a, in a full automated laboratory environment and some, some numbers of Switzerland, we have about 8 million people in Switzerland with a growth rate of about 1%. We spend about 12.2% of our BIP for healthcare expenditures and this is about 80 billion Swiss francs that we spent. Uh, lowering cost is very important in our country and even the boulevard press is very interested and in showing regularly how, are the, how the lab costs developed and you see here an increase of lab costs of 7.3 percent in, that was uh, 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 written two years ago. Even uh, DRG's introduction in 2012 met more pressure on 24-7 production. And in our lab, we are located in Switzerland, we work in Switzerland, and we have a lab center in Basel. This is right here, and we are about five kilometers away from Bühlmann, uh, that is located close to Basel as well. The centralization of our lab is, uh, has, uh, was done in the last decade and today we are able to produce, to produce more than 1,000 different tests 24-7 and calprotectin is one out of these. How do we do that? So doctors, they order their tests out of the electronic patient dossier, uh, they can they have a switch to our portal and they send us electronically the patient data. They can choose the tests, what they need, and we show them wh what are the tubes that they should take of the patient. And they label it with our printers and then after that we report the results of the point of care and of, our res of the results that were produced in the lab. Uh, the possibility to send the results to all devices, electronic devices, are, is possible. Even the possibility to get the result uh, by uh, push notification for critical and emergency results. Uh, doctors, they can create a PDF and send the patient to a hospital. So what is in between this? Translating liquids and tissues into numbers and text, there's a, a lab. And and even the same thing as, as the automobile industry, we, we went to the full automation and we increased during the last decades number of uh, people in the lab because we needed more hands on, on the tests and today we need more the brain and let, the and let the robots do the work and here you see uh, our core lab that is uh, uh, located in Basel. For the calprotectin, there are some special issues because stool specimen we collected in another primary tube than the calyx tube because uh, we see out of other tests like uh, occult blood that uh, patients are not really proper in their work in, in sampling a stool. Overfilling the tubes, we've seen about uh, 10 to 15 percent of the tubes with occult blood testing. And this is uh, in a full automated area, it could be a problem, and that's why we decided to go uh, for another primary tube that the stool is sampled, and we take out the honey that we need to test it further. The, the honey is transferred to the Calyx tube and the Calyx tube are set on a, on a rack input module and we produce about 100 tests a day uh, with this uh, automation from Impeco. The tubes are centrifuged and this is important because uh, 
uh, to avoid blocked needles at the instrument. The, after centrifugation, you need a decapping step. So the decapping step is also important because uh, you, need, uh, you need to adapt the tube. And we were quite happy that Bühlmann was able to adapt the tubes in a two years work to, to bring it on an automated system. Another, another uh, important thing is uh, that you need a good instrument that is able to measure calprotectin. We measure it on the Advia 1800 by Siemens, and you can see how it, how it works here. And uh, there's no problem in, in, in our workflow, even mixing up with, with, uh, with other chemistry tests uh, and chemistry samples. We have no interactions, no contamination, no blocked needles. The challenges was in the past were the, the load clean tubes, so we decided to go for another primary tube and transfer it in, in our lab to the Calyx tube. We have a, 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 a Calyx tube that was redesigned during the last years. The tube recognition is very important. We run 53 different tubes on our track system and one out of these 53 is the Calyx tube and the vision system should recognize it to, to, uh, to uh, be able to measure the right test out of this tube. Uh, decapping is another issue. So the cap is, one is the color, the other is the, the, the opening of the, of, the, of, the, of the cap and this should also be adapted and this works with IMPECO now. The other issue, mostly by microbiologists, uh, was the concern the splashes, even if you have contaminated tubes with noroviruses, for example, and uh, you have to adapt, uh, you have to adapt the filling of the tube and this is still an issue today. So I, I would like to have it uh, less filled than today because uh, you have to adapt the speed of the track system. You have to adapt, for, for example, mechanical parts that you can avoid the splashes. Uh, we have never had blocked aspiration needles and uh, due to the centrifugation step before. Today, we have two touches of the tube from the patient from entrance till disposal and we are able to produce the results 24-7, so it takes, it takes about uh, four hours from entrance to the result. Calprotectin is automatable. Uh, the requirements are resolvable, I think, in, even in other automating, automated systems. And what you need is our willing partners. We found willing partners to adapt uh, their tubes and their work uh, and their technologies to our workflow and uh, thank you to Bühlmann and Siemens that they work together that we are able now to produce this calprotectin test 24 7. So I'm ready for you to take your questions. Have a nice afternoon. Are you doing a yeah. batch extraction? Do you batch samples to do extraction or do you just have random extraction? Yeah, we, we don't have random because, uh, because this is a manual step and uh, the human is lazy <laughs> and the human is always batching. Uh, whatever you tell the people, do it quickly, they batch. Yeah. And usually we have, we have uh, per day, we have four to five batches a day. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. So let's uh, give a big hand for all our speakers. Uh, and um, <laughs> if you want to receive a copy of this presentation, there is a list uh, outside, so sign up and you will receive the presentation. So thank you all for your attendance. <laughs>